So we have the same tariff graph as we had before, but now we want to discuss the normative question of whether it's a good idea or a bad idea to impose the tariff. And we're going to be asking it for the domestic consumers. In this case, they are European, because presumably the government represents the Europeans. I, I, I said domestic consumers. What I mean is uh, domestic consumers plus domestic firms. In other words, we're not going to take into account the welfare of foreigners, because governments typically don't do that. The first thing to note is that the, the, the difference between the domestic production with the tariff and without the tariff is that without the tariff, the price was H, and using the domestic supply curve, production was at F. With the tariff, the price was I, Again, using the domestic supply curve, since the price went up, domestic firms produce more, and the, they're going to produce E. So domestic production has gone up. This is actually the root of what economists don't like about this, because as I said last time, the domestic supply curve turns out to represent domestic marginal cost. And similarly, the world supply curve represents world marginal cost. Look at what happens when this change from domestic production of F to domestic production of E occurs. The quantity between F and E quantity of output between F and E, if it was produced by foreigners, would be produced along this supply curve, and therefore it would cost the marginal cost that is relevant to the world uh, per unit. But if it's produced by domestic firms, then you go along this supply curve, and the output between F and E incurs the domestic firm costs. Now, the domestic firm costs here are higher. The domestic firm costs are AJ, and the, uh, the line, the, the domestic firm marginal costs are AJ, and the world marginal costs are AB. And AJ is clearly higher than AB. So this causes an inefficiency. You are shifting production away from the cheaper source of output, which is the world at AB, to the more expensive source of output, which is the domestic firms at AJ. And it turns out that this is what causes economists to be unhappy. Notice, just briefly, that between between G and F, it's actually the domestic firms that are cheaper, have a ch cheaper cost of production than the foreign firms. The domestic firms go, the domestic firm marginal cost is ZA and the foreign firm marginal cost is HA. So domestic firms actually have an advantage between G and F, but after F, that advantage disappears. The next thing to say is that actually economists don't really care very much what happens after E. One of the things that happened is when you impose a tariff, the domestic consumers demand less output. But they also have to pay less money, so that's not necessarily good or bad. So it's not something that concerns economists. Before, before the tariff, the um, EK was supplied by foreign firms. It was part of what part of what foreign firms supplied, 
And after the tariff, EK is still supplied by foreign firms. It's equal to JC. Remember, after the tariff, IJ is produced by domestic firms and JC by foreign firms. So EK remains being produced <coughs> excuse me, by foreigners. So they produced it before, they produced it after, so they, the cost of production hasn't been affected by the tariff. Now, it's true that before the tariff, consumers had to pay the area under BM. After the tariff, the consumers have to pay the area under JC. They pay this much in tariff, so the foreign firms get what they got before, just the area under BM, and the rectangle JCMB, this one here, JCMB, is the amount of the tariff, which now consumers have to pay to the government. Economists also don't really think that's a problem. This is consumers paying money to the government. That's not necessarily a good thing or a bad thing. It depends on what the government does with it. It might be a good thing. It the government could even rebate it to consumers as long as the rebate was what we call lump sum, that is it didn't depend on how much food the consumers bought. Um, th that, that, that could be done. So, so economists aren't really concerned about that change. So the conclusion is that economists really don't care about the changes that have occurred to the right of point E. This change here, the consumers buying less food, this change here, the consumers uh, paying a new tariff. And, and so economists don't really care about that. So, so let's ignore those changes. Let's ignore the changes after point E. And let's just concentrate on what happens to the left of point E, that is between G and E. <laughs> That's what we're doing on the right-hand side. On the right-hand side, I'm looking only at Q levels between G and E. So I want you to totally forget about totally forget about this part of the graph. Just ignore it and just concentrate on what happens between G and E. I have a tariff column and a no tariff column and then the difference between tariff and no tariff. So let's work this out. And where this is going is to help me decide whether the tariff is a good policy or a bad policy for domestic people overall consumers plus the firms. So we first look at what consumers pay under the tariff. Under the actually let's do the non-tariff first. What consumers pay without the tariff. Without the tariff, the price is H and consumers pay the area under HB, which is HBEG. So HBEG is what consumers pay under the when when there's no tariff. However, when there's a tariff, the price goes up to I, and consumers are going to pay the area under IJ. Now, the reason uh, let me exp I guess I didn't explain that before. The reason why consumers pay as a rectangle is because you need you need an amount of dollars. Now actually this is dollars per unit. So this is like two dollars a bushel if you're measuring let's say grain in bushels and then Q would be measured in bushels. So you need the height of the rectangle which is you know, like five dollars a bushel and the width of the rectangle like ten bushels to get five dollars a bushel times ten bushels is fifty dollars. So in order to get a dollar amount, you need an area in this graph. And one example of an area is a rectangle. So let's do that one more time. 
here I'm trying to get I'm trying to get that value uh, let me do some erasing under the tariff the price is I the the quantity since we're only going to be looking at stuff up to G uh, uh, I mean I'm sorry between G and E the quantity is J and so the width of the rectangle is IJ and the height is GI so that's what consumers pay IJ EG and that's what this is IJ EG let me do some erasing now let's get the difference between them so under the no tariff the consumers were paying the area under HB under the tariff the consumers are paying the area under IJ the difference between them I claim is IJBH IJBH and then, uh, I'll just repeat that so the the difference in the area under IJ and the area under HB is the rectangle IJBH and I, I said over here suppose that's some number like for example ten dollars okay so that's the first line now let's lo look at the second line which is what do consumers pay to domestic firms? We'll do the no tariff first. So this claims it's HAFG. So under no tariff, the price is H. The quantity supplied by domestic firms here is F. So what they pay to domestic firms is the price H times the quantity F. In other words, it's the rectangle H A F G. And that's what I have here, H A F G. So that's what consumers pay to domestic firms when there's no tariff. When there's a tariff, though, the price becomes I, and domestic firms supply all the way to J. So the what consumers pay to domestic firms is the the price which is I times the the quantity which is J or E and so it'd be I J E G and that's what this is I J E G so that's how to get what consumers pay domestic firms next line third line domestic firm costs now it's a little hard uh, it's not possible for me to explain without using calculus why domestic firm costs of the area under the supply curve but I can make it plausible the supply curve is the marginal cost curve how much would it cost to produce four units of output this is Q well you'd add what it costs to produce one what it what it costs to produce from one to two what it costs to produce from two to three and what it costs to produce from three to four so how much does it cost to go from zero to one it costs the marginal cost of one unit of output because marginal cost is how much your costs go up when you produce one more unit so when you go from zero to one you're producing one more unit and so your cost would go up by marginal cost how much additional cost would you incur with the firm incur by going from zero to two well that'd be the marginal cost of two units how much additional cost would it incur going from two to three well, that's the marginal cost of three and from three to four that's the marginal cost of four so you'd add this number, this number, this number, and this number to get the cost of producing four units of output. And now, if instead of talking about 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, I talked about 0, 0.5, 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, and 3.5, and 4, 
then so you're going in half unit increments then this would look like this and if you went in quarter unit increments then it would look like this and if you go basically to the calculus limit which is what calculus is all about infinitesimal increments then it's the whole area under the supply curve which is what I just said domestic firm cost is the area under the supply curve now if any of you guys happen to know calculus then this is just a fundamental theorem of calculus which is, says that if you if you integrate the marginal cost you get the total in other words let me write it in a different way if you integrate dc by dq with respect to q you just get c so that's the fundamental theorem of calculus but of course most of you guys don't don't know that and that's that's okay that's not a problem so domestic firm cost of the area under the supply curve so let's calculate that with uh, no tariff and then tariff okay whoops I didn't want to take it get rid of that so with no tariff what is the area under the supply curve so with no tariff production is at A so the area under the supply curve is the area under ZA so it's going to be ZAFG ZAFG there we go how about with a tariff so with a tariff the area under the supply curve well the output is going to increase to J and that is domestic firm output and so the domestic firm costs are going to be the area under ZJ so ZJEG which is what I have here ZJEG okay so we've got that last line domestic firm profit okay here we're going to use the table domestic firm profit is domestic firm revenue minus domestic firm cost total revenue minus total cost well the revenue is what the firm gets from its customers and the costs are given in the third line so domestic firm profit is the second line minus the third line now let's do the no tariff case first the second line is H A F G H A F G the third line is Z A F G Z A F G well if you take H A F G which is the area under H A and you subtract Z A F G which is the area under Z A what you get is H A Z you get this triangle H A Z so that's where that comes from how about with a tariff what consumers pay to domestic firms with a tariff from the second line is I J E G so it's the area under I J their costs ZJ EG is the area under ZJ the difference between their revenues and the costs is the difference between the area under IJ and the area under ZJ which is this triangle IJZ and so IJZ is the domestic from profit okay, so we got that so what's the difference okay well it's the difference between I J Z and H A Z. Well, you can see that that difference is I J A H. So let's say I have here I J A H. Let's. What we really care about is this difference line, this difference column. So let me compare. Let me do some erasing first. 
I want to compare IJBH, which is the increase in cost that consumers pay if the government imposes a tariff, with IJAH, which is the benefit that firms get. Because you see, under the tariff, so I, I guess I didn't say this, under the tariff, IJZ is bigger than HAZ. Right, so the firms, the firms really like the tariff because their profits go up. Let me do that a little bit differently. The firms like the tariff because the profit goes up. Consumers don't like the tariff because under the tariff they have to pay the area under IJ, which is bigger than the area under HB, which is what they have to pay when there was no tariff. So when you impose a tariff, domestic firms benefit and consumers get hurt. Right, so let's compare the difference between how much domestic firms benefit and how much consumers get hurt. Domestic firms, consumers get hurt by IJBH, which is I, sorry, I J. B H. That's how much dom domestic consumers get hurt. Firms benefit by I J A H. I J A H. That's smaller. So that's why I wrote a seven dollars here compared to ten dollars here because I J A H is not the whole rectangle. I J B H is the whole rectangle. IJAH is just part of that rectangle. So what we conclude, and this is actually the important thing, is that of course imposing the tariff hurts consumers and helps the firms. That in and of itself is neither good nor bad. But what we see here is that the amount by which the consumers are hurt is more than the amount by which firms are benefited. So what we're going to see in the next video is that that's a bad property of tariffs. You're actually hurting the losers more than you're helping the winners. So we'll come back. The next video is going to start right here as well. Um, and we're going to draw out the implication of what does it mean that in w what should it mean, what should we conclude about tariffs given that they hurt the losers more than they help the winners.